Welcome back everyone to another episode on Fitz PSG and today we are going to elicit some feels that I haven't felt in a long time. Do you remember what it feels like to be a child and want something for Christmas so bad that when you finally get it, it almost brings a tear to your eyes? That is what the Nintendo Classic feels like to me. Now, when this originally released in 2016, many people were left wanting the system and unfortunately Nintendo decided to stop producing them. They only made 2.3 million total, which they could have definitely produced way more than that. There is speculation that they did it on purpose to have an artificial supply and demand, or if you want to believe that they're not an evil company, it may have been because at the same time they were producing the Nintendo Switch. I'm going to go with the first over the second, because let's be honest, it doesn't take much to print this thing. There's not really much involved, and if they already had a line of these going, they could have just continued. The reason why it was so dis disappointing that they stopped making them was it just increased the value again and again for scalpers. The people that managed to get these were not ones that actually wanted to play the system. Unfortunately, the people that got them were ones that went and sold the system to people that actually wanted them for two and three times the amount that the system was actually supposed to sell for. There, this system right here is supposed to retail for $59.99 in the United States. When this first came out, I was trying to buy one and I couldn't find one under $150. Now, as much as I wanted one, I was not willing to actually go ahead and spend that much money for a system that should have been $60. But, Nintendo did the wise thing and actually re-released this system on June 29th, 2018 in the United States. So, I finally got my hands on the NES Classic Edition. I cannot wait to unbox this and see what's inside. If you have not yet gotten your hands on one of these and you have never watched an unboxing of an NES Classic, stick around. We're going to unbox this thing and see what is inside. Now, very well done packaging, I must say. I'm just going to kind of start from the outside. So it does a very good job of drawing you in and it looks much like the old Nintendo console actually did when it released. This reminds me of the old box for the Nintendo and it gives you a really good idea of what's inside. So it shows the actual controller on the side, it shows the console on this side, and really it does fit in your hand. This thing is really, really tiny. And it does say 30 classic games and we can see on the back the games that are in here. Let me kind of list them off here for you. Some of the big the big ones. So we've got um, Castlevania, uh, Donkey Kong Jr., Double Dragon, Excite Bike, Final Fantasy, uh, Galaga, which I, I love that game. We've got Kid Icarus, Kirby, Mario, Mega Man, Metroid, Ninja Gaiden, and Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, Tecmo Bowl, um, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, which I've actually never played before. I love Zelda and I have never played that game so I look forward to actually getting my hands on some of these classics that I've never been able to play. Um, the reason why this is so exciting to me, there are some games in here that I have not played in a very very long time and if you go out and try to buy these at a classic game store or try to buy them online, unfortunately most of these sell for an absorbent amount of money. Uh, just as an example, I was looking today at the game store that I, went, I go to regularly and the, the Castlevania that's on here sells for about $30 a piece. So right off the bat, this definitely makes your money. Uh, Zelda 2 is very expensive. These are some of the things that just really upset me. It, retro games are amazing but people charge an arm and a leg to actually allow people to play these classics and it sucks. It really does. But let's go ahead and dig in here and see what's inside. Now, while I'm opening this up, I would say my good friends over at Generation Gap Gaming recently just put out a top 10 games that should have been on the NES Classic. And I would highly, highly recommend you watch that. There are definitely some great games that he mentioned that should have been on there and I highly agree. 
and I will put a link in the description so you guys can go ahead and check that out. Make sure if you haven't subscribed to their channel, maybe think about doing that as well because they do incredible work over there. It is a really cool channel of a gentleman named Tyler who basically just shares his love of gaming with his kids and it's really cool to see. So we have a warranty guide, no one cares. Okay, we got some instructions. I don't really think that we're gonna need this, but the other side is freaking cool. We've got Duck Hunt and Rob the Robot. I never had a Rob the Robot, Ooh, but he is really cool. I know none of the games that he was actually supposed to be used for are apparently any good. He was kind of a gimmick, but hey, he's a really cool thing to just kind of sit around and show people. Now this is the star of the show right here. This bad boy, oh, it is so small. Insert, that's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it looks so freaking nice. It really looks like a miniature version of the NES. Now there obviously are some differences. This is about oh, a tenth of the size of the real thing. And uh, instead of having all the old inputs, it has an HDMI on the back. And the power is just a really tiny DC in that kind of looks like a USB. I think it's actually going to be powered by a micro USB port is what it looks like. Now the flap is all for show. That does not open. But, oh, that is freaking cool. The power button does work. I'm going to guess that is actually how you do turn it on and the light should light up. And then the reset button, I don't know if it actually works, but you can press it. So that is really cool. And then there are two ports on the front for controllers. So the cool thing about this being digital, you don't got to blow on your games to get them to work. Everyone that has a classic uh, Nintendo, not this, but the old school one, you know what I'm talking about. Blowing in the thing to try to get them to work was a pain in the butt but for some reason it always worked now the rest of the stuff in here is kind of boring but we have our power cable which looks like it is i was right it's a micro usb that has a actual little power pack this is so your ac adapter and the usb cable that are going to go together that are going to plug in they do include an hdmi cable which is really, really cool. I do like that. That way you don't have to go out and purchase one. And they do only give one controller. I believe the Super Nintendo Classic actually gave two. So this one's a little bit of a downgrade, but it is cheaper. So that's, I guess it's a fair trade-off. It's $20 cheaper. And you can buy, I believe, wireless versions of these controllers at Walmart for like $10. So not a big deal. I'm probably going to play this mostly by myself anyway because I have no friends. I have a sad, lonely existence of a life. I'm just going to go grab a beer, drink myself stupid, and play some classic games. Now they decided that they wanted to put on two different zip ties on this controller, which thank you, Nintendo. Thank you. We'll get this completely undone here. And let's see, I've heard complaints. Yeah, and now I know why there's complaints. And now I know why they sell extension cords. Because this, oh, this is terrible. Imagine, imagine if this was as long as the original cord. You'd have to have the Nintendo sitting on the floor right next to you. So I guess I get the idea. You kind of just plug it in and it maybe it's meant to be plugged into like a tv right next to you but come on nintendo what is that a three foot cord like you couldn't do any better that i'd say that's a drawback to having all these good games but i will buy an extender or the wireless controller for 10 bucks so either way we'll make this work now controller feel i believe they're almost identical to the original controller the a and b button feels really really nice it doesn't feel cheap like you you know some of those like knockoff controllers you buy how it kind of you know you can tell they're not made by nintendo i actually think that i prefer this controller 
to the original one. It feels like the buttons are just a little bit firmer, a little bit better construction overall. It doesn't feel like it's cheap at all. I really like what they did with this. Very well done. So overall, I'm really impressed with the Nintendo Classic. I cannot wait to actually go out and hook this thing up and play it. There are tons of games on here that are absolutely incredible. And I'll be playing some of these on the channel for sure. So hopefully you'll stick around for those. And hopefully you enjoyed the unboxing. If you've never seen one before, you just have never stumbled on this channel before. If you did like what I have here, go ahead and think about hitting that subscribe button and the like button. And let me know in the comments below what game on the NES Classic is your favorite. And if you have one as well, because I'd love to hear if you were actually able to get one before they re-released or if you're able to get one now. But until next time, guys, I'll catch you back on the next episode of Fitz PSG.